Today I'm doing a quick look at the Fire Stick 4K 2023 and Game Pass Ultimate together. This is not really a review of the Fire Stick 4K 2023. I'm not doing a speed test, I'm not going to compare it to the Apple TV or any other streaming solution. But when Microsoft announced that like, Game Pass Ultimate would be available on the Fire Stick, I was like, finally. Because I understand that they are wall garden, but at the same time, it makes no sense to me that if you're going to push the streaming and cloud gaming, that you cannot play your Xbox game on the Apple TV or any other streaming device that you have. The setup is pretty straightforward. I have uh, the first version of the 4K Apple TV I left at my parents when I go there over summer or Christmas break to stream content if I want to uh, watch something on the TV. I also have their, their first HD version of the Apple TV because there's no 4K TV there. You can see in the box that you have the remote, the Fire TV, a USB-A to micro uh, USB for power with the power adapter. And you also have an extension cable in case that you're not able to plug it directly to your monitor on your TV. I'm not going to show all the setup because it's kind of boring. And I, But I was curious because it's been a couple of years. I updated my Apple TV at my friends, but I never really like check if like they change a lot in the new menu. It was interesting by choosing Canada that you had option for CBC Gem and Crave, CTTV and stuff like that. I didn't retest if I put US, if it would change, but at least it's interesting to have like the Canadian channel, even like TVA in French. One thing that also surprised me when you plug it is that it detected my ultra wide monitor and seemed to use a native resolution for it without any like settings that need to be changed by the user. No, I still think it's the worst interface of all the media streamer. There's ads everywhere and it's tough to find which app you already installed and which one are ads. But let's go straight to the main topic of today, cloud streaming.
so what did I tell of the Amazon Fire TV 2023 plus Game Pass that we have here? Well, it's basically what I expected. Normally, when you review a product, you're trying to avoid any bias. But because it's not a full review, uh, basically, like I would describe it as something that is nice to have. Let me explain. There's two uh, Fire TV that are compatible right now the 2023, and there's an Ultra version. The big difference is that the Ultra has more space, but also come with Wi-Fi 6E. I want to test 6E and 7 later, but I'm always more interested at the base of a product that like the more luxury one, because often it's the one that people were gonna buy anyways. So, for my first test, I plugged the uh, Fire TV into a USB capture card to capture all the B-roll I needed. Uh, the capture card adds some lag, so when you look at the footage, it's not necessarily the most representative of what it is, but I still think it's pretty close of the experience when you plug it directly to a HDMI port of my monitor. So for 2D game, it's totally fine. Uh, and you could see that there was a tiny bit of delayed when playing Shredder Revenge, but because it's a quick action game, it doesn't take long to adapt and just uh, it a little in advance you move. After a minute, I completely forget about it and just play Shredder the way it is. So then I move to like CR Star, a turn-based RPG, and it's the same thing. Everything is fine because it's not a quick action game. You can just time your input really well and it's go well. After that, I decided to try Lives of P. And at the beginning, and you can see it in the bureau, I'm kind of struggling like timing my dodge. I'm not really trying to hit the boss. I'm just trying to see if can I, can I dodge like, I don't know, 90% of the time, the enemy. Because when I do, then I'm confident I can just play normally, right? So it took some time, but eventually I got it to a point that I could basically dodge, like it's the first boss anyways, but I could just dodge most of his attack without problem. So I'm confident that like it would play well. Now, after, like I said, uh, after I was done capturing the B-roll, I plug it directly to a HDMI 2.0 port of my 34-inch uh, ultra-wide monitor, put it the rendering in fast or game mode, and basically like replay all the games. At the beginning, I used like my 8 bit generic like Switch Pro controller. It's like a Switch Pro controller with less battery life that's worth at uh, maybe $35. It's normally what I use as a generic Bluetooth controller when I'm testing console because it's nice to have a controller that you use to the shape and just dedicate it to those console. But because it's Game Pass PC, I was, uh, after I did my first uh, testing, I was also curious to test it with the uh, Core 2 Elite controller, which I put generic like pedal, just to see if like I would see a difference with the Xbox controller. I really didn't feel the difference. The other thing is that because it's wireless only, I'm like three feet from the router with a direct access. I can see like the router. It has a clear path from the Fire TV to the router, even if the desk is there. So I still think it's a best case scenario because I'm so close to the router. So in the end, I would say that like I try more advanced game like Starfield and Forza Horizon 4, and those I didn't like. Like for Starfield, I feel the shooting being off. And for Forza Horizon, I'm already terrible at racing game, but I really feel that like the delay you get from the input is enough to like screw up like your driving. So in the end, I still think it's a nice bonus to have. When I was thinking, oh, okay, I'm getting rid of the TV upstairs, uh, I should probably plug like uh, some kind of like streaming stick and my 34 inch monitor and using that as a secondary Xbox and secondary streaming if I am on the bed. My first idea was to get the on 4K stick while we were in the US because like the, uh, it's like 15 USD or 17 USD. 
so it's on perfect. But when Microsoft announced that, that they would support Game Pass PC on the Fire Stick, I was like, oh, well, no, nah, I need a Fire Stick. And it was on sale on 35 Canadian. So it makes sense for me. Like I can do a quick session of Xbox or stream something while I'm in my bedroom. So it's a no brainer. But like maybe I'm old man getting a cloud, but I always prefer local if it was like competitive or like, you know, I don't want to have the lag and sync the artifact and like I want the best quality possible while I'm gaming. Then in those cases, like for multiplayer game or things like that, I would probably just use my Xbox. But for the rest, if it doesn't really matter, it's just a story game like an RPG or even quick action game like uh, Beat Em Up, like um, Scott Pilgrim or Shredder Revenge were totally fine. So I think for like, if you have Game Pass PC and you're uh, Ultimate and you want like a secondary Xbox, it's totally like a best option that you can get for like $35. I'm also curious if it's a glimpse in the future where, yeah, Microsoft getting back to the root as being a software company first and being saying, yeah, we'll maybe release a preferred way to play. This is the new Xbox, I don't know, 2026 or 2028, whatever. But if you have Game Pass, because subscription seems to be sadly the future, well, if you want to play on your Apple TV, if you want to play on your Fire TV or even on your PlayStation or your console from Nintendo, well, maybe we'll offer you the, that possibility because we still want you $15 a month versus not getting any part of that pie. Now, I understand that there's limitation because they're all the wall garden between Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. But I can think that like, there's a future when maybe the hardware matter less and Luna just bumping at the back of like the video. But yeah, I think there's a, a future when like the maybe the console matter less and you can access your game anywhere and we're slowly going towards that future. Thanks for watching.